So we are going to see what a thread is and we will talk about the states of thread and priorities and then we are going to spend some time how to create a thread class and then we are going to actually spend a big chunk of our time uh, for creating and running a thread. Um, so basically how you can actually perform a particular chunk of task uh, using a thread and we'll talk about the thread group and the synchronization and the how interthread, how multiple, I mean how two threads or actually set of threads can communicate each other and uh, then we will see how we can use timer and timer task classes. So what is a thread? So thread is basically a sequence, it represents the sequential flow of control of your program. Okay. So when you are starting your application, uh, the, you know, it's going to be, I mean your main method is actually being uh, processed as a thread. Okay. Uh, so, you know, the reason that concept of threads are important is because uh, to handle, uh, is because in many cases you want to handle uh, your task in parallel. So it's actually called the concurrent operations. Okay. So in that case, what you want to do is that each operation is being handled by a separate thread in parallel. That will give you a much better performance. Okay. So sometimes we call it multi-threading application. Multi-threaded application, that means an application uh, is being run with a multiple threads. Uh, so each of, each of those threads actually performing tasks in parallel. Okay. So yeah, so this is the example. On the left, you have an example of si single thread case. Okay. So you have a uh, single thread is actually performing task. And now we have a multi-threaded application on the right, and uh, here we have a three threads uh, performing tasks. So of course, multi-threaded applications are supposed to provide much better performance than uh, sequential and single-thread based application. So multi-threading support in Java platform. So each application has at least one thread uh, or several if you count uh, system threads. Okay, so we're going to actually see later on even if you're running a very simple Hello World application, uh, it has the application thread and then it has several system threads. Okay, so uh, in fact, by you know, it will uh, you, you run your application uh, in fact involve multiple threads. Okay. Uh, but from developer programmers a point of view you start with just one thread which is actually a uh, main thread and that's the one that is running your main uh, the, uh, the uh, method and uh, later on you can actually create uh, other threads manually in, in, in your code so those are the things that we are going to learn you know how can I create other threads in my application so that I can give uh, the chunk of a task to that particular thread so that these threads are perform, you know, running in parallel. Okay, so th thread state. So thread could be in one of these five state. Running is actually actively running, so it's in control of the CPU. Okay. Ready to run is it can run but it's not given a chance yet, so it doesn't have a CPU. Okay. Resumed is ready to run after being suspended or blocked. Okay and then suspend it. Uh, voluntarily allowed other threads to run. You can suspend yourself, meaning you, you know, a thread can suspend itself and then it becomes a suspended state. Block means uh, it's, you know, the thread is not doing anything, it's waiting for something to happen. For example, some resource to be available or some event to occur and things like that. Okay. Okay, then uh, thread priorities. So there are, in fact, the 10 priorities in thread. Okay, so it ranges from 1 to 10. It represents, you know, how urgent that thread is supposed to be run. Okay, so the higher number uh, that uh, priority has, uh, it means it's more important than low priority, low numbered uh, thread. Okay, uh, so uh, the uh, uh, let's say you have a two threads are ready to run and one has a priority of 5 and the other one has a priority 10 then you know the one that has a priority 10 will be considered uh, as a next thread to run okay 
Okay, context switch. So uh, context switch means that uh, you know the thread snatches the control of the CPU from the another. So basically, uh, CP CPU is running uh, a thread. Uh, you can think of a CPU can run on a single thread. Okay, so even if the multiple threads are running in parallel, basically a single point in time, a C, you know a single CPU can run a single. Uh, thread. Okay, but these days we have a, what is called the uh, multi-core or multi-processor uh, machines, which means that those machines, in fact, have a multiple CPUs. Okay, so each of those CPUs can actually run different thread. Okay, so those are typical uh, the architecture these days. Even your laptop, in fact, have a multiple CPUs. Uh, so it's very common to have a multiple CPUs. So in that case, each CPU will actually run each uh, the, a thread. Okay. Now suppose if you have a single CPU and uh, the single CPU can run uh, a thread a single point in time. Okay. So you know thread has to actually take turns. So those taking turns are called context switch. Okay. So this context switch could actually occur uh, when running thread voluntarily relinquished, relinquished CPU control. So by suspending himself. Okay. Well, running thread can be preempted by higher priority thread. So, you know, the machine will uh, operating system will actually intercept, uh, you know, interrupt the existing uh, running thread, and you know, if there is in fact the higher uh, priority thread waiting for the CPU to be available. Okay. Now, if there are more than uh, multiple, uh, more than one uh, thread that has the same uh, priority thread, then the operating system will determine which one to run next. I mean, it depends on operating system. Okay, so in the ca in the case of Windows, uh, as a default, it uses a time sliced round robin scheme. Okay, so thread group. So thread group represent a set of threads. So you know the set of thread actually belongs to a thread group. Okay, so in fact, the, uh, when you are running your Java application, you are going to see two groups of uh, two thread groups. One is uh, system group, and the other one is the application group. Okay, uh, so this thread group form a tree in which they each thread group, except the initial thread group, has a parent. So these thread groups could actually have hierarchical tree structure. Okay. And uh, a thread is allowed to access information about its own thread group, but it's not allowed to access its parent thread group. So this is an example of thread group. So I could, you know, so we can actually see how we can actually start uh, a thread. So here you can actually create a brand new thread, and then you are starting that thread. Okay, so we are starting three thread. And uh, then get the thread group of the current. You can find the a thread is always belonging to a particular thread group. Okay, so you can call the current thread method of the thread uh, class. So you know basically this is a static method of the thread class. So you find what is the current thread that is running, and then you can find out the thread group that it belongs to. Okay, and uh, then. The, uh, and display the names of the threads in the current thread group, and then you can actually you know, display all the threads in that uh, thread group. Okay, so this is uh, uh, an application that uh, find out what is the thread group your current thread is running, and then you know find out all the threads under that particular thread group. Okay, so exercise one. Uh, by the way, I have actually modified the hands-on lab this morning. Uh, you know, so if you have downloaded uh, this uh, hands-on lab uh, yesterday you know please we download it okay so let's take a look at the uh, hands-on lab documentation thread uh, yeah actually yeah this this yeah I actually switch this is actually supposed to be um, yeah, thread group and thread priority. I yeah, I think yeah, looks like I didn't make that change here. So exercise one is basically, uh, you know, playing around with a thread group, and we want to see all the view. We want to see all the threads, and we want to see thread thread priority. Okay. So here uh, we are creating three threads. Again, we are going to learn how we can create these threads later on in detail. So just for now, this is the way that you are going to thread. You are going to start three threads in your application in your main method. Okay. All right. So in my main method, I created three extra threads. So when you're actually running main method, that is running in a method. Okay. So by the time here, you are going to actually have a four threads. One is main thread, 
that is started by the uh, you know Java runtime and then you created three more of your own okay so here I created uh, now I try to find the uh, the what is the current thread that is running and then I want to get the thread group and then I want to actually you know display all the the threads on, in that particular uh, group okay so uh, so yeah this is the uh, thread application for now don't worry about the logic here we're gonna actually learn this one in detail later on and then you build and run the application so when we run the application so let's say run this application is a thread group test so I'm going to run it thread group test oops this one and I'm going to run it so you can see there are four active threads in this thread group so one is main the other one is called Boston, New York, and Seoul. So those are the names I gave to the thread. Okay, all right. So um, that is um, basically uh, how we can find out the thread group a particular uh, thread belongs to. Okay, so that's the uh, and one the two is display all thread in the system. So here I created my own thread, and uh, you can uh, you can actually call. Uh, find all thread method in here. Basically, uh, the um, we get the uh, current group. Uh, yeah, so you know you can actually get the uh, from the current group. You can call the get parent of that group. Okay, and then you wanna actually you wanna actually display all the uh, the uh, uh, the. Uh, in this case, you know the parent group is supposed to be system. Okay, so system group will have uh, other thread group. So when you run the application, this is what you're going to see. So these are the system group. Okay? So the uh, you know there is a three thread going on in system group, which is a reference handler, finalizer, and signal dispatcher. Then we have our four uh, the uh, the threads in our main uh, thread group, okay? Uh, the last last one is uh, view all threads in the system using GUI. So in this application, we are going to display all the threads that are running. So uh, that is uh, view all threads. So let me run this application. Okay. So yeah. So these are all the threads uh, that are running. So you can see we have uh, the. Um, uh, you know, two thread group, a system thread group and main uh, system main uh, the uh, uh, thread group, and you can see in my application uh, in main group we have a main method and then we have a bunch of other thread like AWT. Those are all related to you know the GUI. So yeah, you know we actually running GUI application. That's why you know it's actually running this AWT thread. Okay, and these are the priorities. Okay, so reference handler has a priority ten. And here, uh, Java 2D that has a priority, and rest of it is five, six, eight, and seven, or something like that. It's all alive, and uh, and thread name. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna give you about the uh, uh, seven minutes to try uh, this. Yeah, actually, one dot four. Uh, yeah, we also have a one dot four. It's actually priority. Okay. So here we are actually starting this thread, giving a priority ten. Giving this thread as priority five and giving this thread a priority uh, one, okay, and uh, and then in this code we are just kind of writing uh, number, okay, and uh, then you can see, you know, the uh, the ones that has a priority ten is actually running before uh, the thread that are priority five, and uh, the the one that has a priority one will actually run the last, okay, so you might as well just run that application as well, okay. So I'll give you about seven or eight minutes for this going to be okay so next we are going to talk about thread class okay so thread class has a multiple constructor so you can create a thread uh, without passing anything you can give a name to a thread and then you can pass the runnable object and all that stuff so uh, you know don't worry about these constructors we're gonna actually see how we can use these things and then uh, it does have a constant uh, the uh, the priority uh, max priority mini priority and non priority and uh, then it has the uh, uh, method such as uh, current method uh, yeah so you can see this is a static method right so this is the one that we have used in exercise uh, one 
and we can get the name we can set the name of the thread and we get the priority of that thread we can see whether that's alive or not meaning whether it is in fact running or not and all that stuff okay now that's a thread class now let's see how we can create how we can create a thread in fact there are multiple ways okay so you can actually see there are two ways of programming for creating Java thread so the first way is extending thread class and the other way is implementing runnable interface okay so the reason you might have to choose second one is because in Java you can extend only one parent so if you are trying to create a thread class that already has a parent then you cannot extend thread class in option one so in that case you can implement runnable interface okay so we're gonna actually take a look at both options in detail okay so let's take a look at the first option extending thread class so this case you are creating your class brand new meaning you don't have your class does not extend any parent class it doesn't have any parent class so you should be able to extend thread class so once your thread once your subclass extend uh, thread class then you have to actually provide run method implementation of the thread class okay so the run method is like you know is a main method of regular Java application so in regular Java application you know the way that you point the way that you let the Java runtime what logic is is actually the logic inside a main method right for thread the thing that you want to actually indicate that to be run is inside the run method okay alright so the uh, you know then the instance of that subclass will be created okay so object will be instantiated and then the thread and the start method of the object instance needs to start the execution so it's not really you know you cannot you don't actually you know the invoke the run method directly you are going to call the start method of that object and then start method will trigger the invocation of the run method of the object instance so inside the run method you actually have a task to be performed but uh, you know in order to in order to run that the logic inside the run method the start method has to be invoked okay so let's see an example of this now in option in this option so you know basically we are looking at the extending thread class now there are two different programming model that you can choose in terms of where you want to actually call the start method so scheme number one in this case is that start method is not in the constructor of the sub, sub, subclass then the start method has to be explicitly invoked after object of that class is created or scheme number two is that you could have the start method as part of the constructor of your subclass in that case the, the start method does not have to be explicitly invoked because uh, you know it will be invoked as part of the constructor okay now you might want to say at this point I am confused and I perfectly understand okay so let's see the code so this is the scheme number one so this is the case that start method is not in the constructor of the subclass so this first part of the code I'm actually creating brand new thread class subclass called the print name thread and extends thread okay so it does have a run it does act it does have to provide run uh, method implementation okay so basically it just get the name of the thread and then it just print it out hundred times that's what it does now because the start method is not in the constructor of this print name thread case this start method of this object has to be created so in the main method let's say we created an object instance of A you know meaning we created this print name thread A and uh, then we have to call start method directly like this okay and then we created another thread called the print name thread B and then we have to we have to call start okay so as I said before you know you cannot call run method directly on your object you have to call start method and this start method is the one that has to uh, you know that will actually call run method uh, 
eventually. And the reason is because the start method has to construct some kind of environment first, you know. So that's the reason, you know, you have to call start method and start method will actually, you know, construct some uh, environment and then it will call run method. Okay? So this is scheme number one. Okay, scheme number two, this is the case that I call the start method of uh, inside the constructor of print name thread. In this case, all I have to do is just create the uh, thread object. When I create the thread object, the constructor of this uh, thread class, print name thread class, will be invoked, and inside the constructor, it will call start method. So this this is the case that you don't have to call start directly here because it gets created as part of the constructor invocation. Okay. All right, so let's, let me actually explain exercise two, and then let's have lunch time. So this is the first case, is that, that the start method is not in the constructor of the subclass. And the second case is the start method is in the constructor of the subclass. OK, so let's actually run extend thread class test zero. Extend test class zero. So this is the one. So we're going to actually run it. So, you know, this is what you get, okay? So, so let's take a look at the code. So, again, this is the uh, same code, okay? So, print name thread extends a thread, okay? And it does provide run method implementation. And then in the main method, we have to start. We have to call start of that object, okay? If you don't call it, then the thread is not going to get started, okay? So, you might want to actually comment this out and see what happens. Okay, so that is the case where the you are starting manually. Uh, okay, and here you are actually adding two more threads. Okay, you know you're actually creating another thread and you're creating another thread, and each of those threads need to be started. Right? Okay. So that is the two dot one. Two dot two. We are going to add start method inside the constructor of the subclass. Okay, so in this case, in your main method, all you have to do is basically creating an object of that thread class, sub, you know, the uh, print name thread class, and then you should run. All three threads are supposed to be run. Okay, all right. So that is exercise two. So I'm going to give you this uh, ten minutes, and we'll have a thirty minutes break. So we will be back uh, forty minutes after hour. So we'll be back one forty uh, Boston time. Okay. All right, so we have looked into uh, the scheme where you are going to create a thread by subclassing thread, okay? Now, the second scheme is implementing runnable interface. So runnable interface should be implemented by uh, any class whose instances are intended to be executed as a thread, okay? So uh, the uh, implementation that implements runnable interface should have a run method. Okay. All right. So why you want to actually create a thread using runnable interface? Uh, the reason that you have to use runnable interface is that some classes already has a parent class, which means that that class cannot extend thread class. Okay. So uh, in that case, if you want to make that class to be uh, executed as uh, as uh, as a thread, then you have to implement. You know, that thread has to implement the runnable interface. Okay, so same uh, ways uh, as we have seen, you have uh, two schemes. One is having the start method of the thread object needs to be explicitly invoked, or uh, you know the uh, the uh, start method is going to be in the constructor as well. Okay, so same same deal. Okay, so let's see the first. So here we have a print name runnable subclass and it already extends some class. So this class cannot extend thread class anymore. So you know I have to actually implement runnable interface. Okay? And then I can provide uh, run method implementation. Okay? All right. Uh, here, uh, because this constructor uh, class does not have start method, we are going to uh, once we created uh, once we created uh, the uh, this runnable type of thread object, 
then we, we, we have to manually start it. Okay, again, this is the same deal that we have seen. And the other case is that you are going to create a thread right here. So by, by passing this, this object and the name, and then you are going to start it. Okay, so in that case, you don't have to uh, start manually in your uh, code. Okay, so this is pretty much the same pattern that we have seen in previous case. So let's do exercise three. Okay, so this one is uh, you know again this is the uh, pretty much the same code. Okay, so here we implement runnable, and we implemented uh, run method of this runnable interface, and uh, since we have not uh, included start starting thread code in the constructor we have to uh, start it ourselves okay so you have uh, so you create the uh, print name runnable object and uh, you have a runnable type then you're going to pass that runnable type to new thread yeah so this is you have to actually create a new thread object passing that runnable object and then you can run the start okay and uh, the other one is you are going to create a thread object from this runnable and then you're going to start as part of the constructor in that case you don't have to uh, start yourself okay so I'll give you guys uh, you know about seven minutes to finish this exercise so uh, between these two schemes, extending thread class versus implementing runnable interface, uh, which one do you want to use? Uh, you know, uh, unless you have a constraint of the, uh, you know, class already has a parent, uh, you know, unless you have, if you have that constraint, then you got to use this runnable interface scheme. Uh, if, other than that, you know, either one is actually fine. You know, between the two, there is not much difference, okay? Um, Alright, so moving forward. Synchronization. So let's talk about the race condition and how to solve it. Race conditions. Now because we are now have a multiple threads uh, running at the same time and they might in fact actually access the same object, same resources at the same time. So you might in fact have a race condition. Okay. So race conditions occur when multiple simultaneously running threads access the same object or same resource and uh, it might actually result in unexpected uh, the consequences okay on Un or undesirable consequences uh, so for example you know if multiple threads are trying to read and write to a file uh, depending on when and uh, when those threads are actually read and write those you know the uh, the threads might not might might actually see uh, the undesirable, uh, the uh, the uh, the result. Okay, so we need to actually synchronize uh, the behaviors of these threads uh, when they access this shared resource. So let's see an example of unsynchronized example. So here, let's say we have a class called the two strings, and it has a print statement, and this print statement is actually printing uh, the first string and second string, and just kind of simulate, you know, the uh, you know just to simulate uh, long running kind of task you know we just kind of slip 500 uh, seconds here the 500 uh, milliseconds here and uh, oops, sorry about that sorry about that here uh, and then what we want to do is we are going to create a two uh, the we actually create a thread okay yeah so this is actually uh, print string thread and it's a runnable interface and uh, inside the run what it does is it's going to call the print method of two strings passing this two uh, the passing this two string object okay and inside the constructor is starting the thread okay so in the main code uh, you know is basically running uh, is creating three threads passing these two strings hello there and how are you and thank you very much now when you're running this application because these uh, this print statement this code is not synchronized you are going to actually see this kind of mixed up result okay so let's actually try to run that application that is uh, the uh, 4.1 so that is um, synchronized example 0 unsynchronized yeah so this is the one so let's actually try to run this application 
So you can see the things are really mixed up. How are hello, thank you, there, and very much, and you? You know, obviously this is not what we want. What we want is that uh, you know whenever this method is being invoked, I don't want any other thread to actually call this one. You know, meaning whenever a single thread is actually calling this print statement, I want other threads to be blocked so that the current th thread finish. Okay, so that's what we want. So that's where we are, you know, introducing what is called the uh, synchronization scheme. Okay. All right. So uh, synchronization log on Java. So Java offers what is called a synchronization monitor. You can think of it as a log. Okay. Java offers synchronization log, or we can call it just a log, on each instance of object class. So every single object in Java has this synchronization monitor, meaning every single object in Java can be a lock. Okay? So, uh, so threads are synchronized through object monitors, through the lock, meaning, you know, when the particular lock is, uh, is used by one thread and other threads cannot do anything, cannot, cannot actually, you know, the, uh, access that code. Okay? Uh, that is uh, the access that code that is associated with that lock. Okay, so only the thread who owns that lock, uh, object monitor or object thread of the uh, owner thread of the lock or lock can execute the block of code that needs to be synchronized. And you know the code block we are going to call it synchronized block. So a single thread can own the synchronized block uh, as long as it has the object monitor. So once synchronized block code is finished, then object monitor, the lock, is going to be released. So any other thread waiting for that lock will be chosen. And one of the, uh, the threads that is waiting for that lock uh, will be chosen and will become the owner of the lock. And then that thread will actually uh, you know, execute the synchronized block uh, to the end. Okay, so there are three different ways that you can uh, the synchronize using this lock. Okay, meaning become a thread becomes the owner of this lock uh, in one of the three ways. Uh, you can use a synchronized static method. You can use a synchronized instance method, and you can actually use a synchronized statement on a common object. So let's see each of these schemes. Option one is that uh, you know if you happen to have a static method and then you can use the synchronize like this okay in this case in this case uh, the uh, the actual log object is the uh, class object okay because the static method does not have an object instance of this class right so in this case the class object itself is the uh, the log object okay so again you know so this code is going to be owned uh, by a single thread until this you know until it is finished so the result is going to be like this. Okay. Okay. So let's do exercise. What, so here, synchronize static method. So let's try to run it. Synchronize. Maybe this is the one. Okay. So it works as expected. Okay. And uh, this is the one that uh, okay. So yeah, so synchronized static. Okay. All right. I want to actually use rename it. Okay, so um, let's go. The option two is we. I mean, you know, this this method could be non-static method. Okay, so in that case, the object itself, you know, the so you know the object of this class object. So we have an instance object, right? So that object is going to be the lock, uh, the uh, synchronization monitor. Okay, and the result is going to be the same. Okay, so that is uh, this guy. Let's take a look at the uh, two strings. In this case, is instance method. Okay, so I'm going to actually change the name of this project.
synchronized instance. And it should work. Okay, so as you can see, they work fine. Okay. All right. Uh, the last scheme is use on use synchronized statement on a common object. So in this case, uh, the uh, you know we are not really using synchronized you know the synchronized the uh, on this uh, particular the uh, uh, code block. Okay. Uh, instead, what we're going to do is we are going to actually have a common object. So we're going to actually create. Uh, you know, two strings. Uh, so let's take a look at the main method first. We are going to actually create a common object in this case. In this case, two strings. Okay, uh, and uh, then we are going to pass that common object for each of these thread. So for each of these thread, uh, the uh, the uh, um, uh, you know it will actually have. So these two strings object will be uh, assigned to this. Okay. So they actually have an access to this common object, and then inside the run, it will be synchronized on the common object. So, which means this common object's log is used to for synchronize this uh, print statement. Okay, all right. So that is this one. Uh, this one. Okay. So this is. I'm gonna just rename it. Synchronized common object. Okay, so let's run this guy and should work fine. Okay, all right. So that is a synchronization. Okay, so I'm going to give you five minutes to try those exercises. Next topic is communication, inter-thread communication. So uh, every object class, I mean every object uh, from in Java is actually an object from object class. So object class has various inter-thread communication method: wait, notify, and notify all. Okay. So here uh, the wait method is defined in the object class. So every Java class inherits this wait method. So wait method causes a thread to release the lock it is holding on an object, allowing other thread to lock to to run. So in our previous example, you know when things are actually being synchronized, you know inside if you call wait, then you are basically releasing the lock. Okay. So wait can be invoked only within synchronized code. So you know in our code. So you know th this is the synchronized code, right? So inside you can actually call wait. Okay, in that case you are releasing the lock. Okay, and anybody, any other thread that is actually waiting for that lock to be released will be notified. And it should always be uh, wrapped in a try block as it throws I/O exceptions. So wait could actually throw an I/O exception, so you have to actually catch it with a try and catch. Okay, uh, wait can only be used by the thread that owns the lock. On the uh, on the object. I mean, this is always happening. So wait, uh, wait is going to be invoked uh, only by the thread that owns the lock. Okay. Okay. So when wait is call called, the thread becomes dormant until one of the four things occurs. So another thread invokes the notify method. So now you know when you call the wait, it becomes dormant, meaning it's actually waiting for the lock uh, itself. Okay. Uh, so you know later on, uh, when someone actually releases the lock, then this guy can have a chance to acquire that lock. Okay, uh, so this notify and notify all is basically get called uh, by the system when someone actually who owns the lock uh, the releases it. Okay, another thread interrupts the thread. Another uh, specified web time elapses. Okay, so when one of those occurs, the thread becomes reavailable to the scheduler and competes for the lock on the object. And once it gains the log of the object, then it resumes where it became dormant. Okay, okay so notify method uh, so wakes up the single thread that is waiting on this object's monitor. So any thread waiting on this uh, object, one of them is chosen to be awakened, and the choice is arbitrary and it occurs at the discretion of the impl implementation. Okay. Uh, so again, it could be used only within the synchronized code, and uh, the awakened thread will not be able to proceed until the current thread relinquishes the lock on this object. 
Okay. Yeah. So you know, basically, when you call the notify method, uh, it wakes up the another thread waiting on that particular object's log. Notify all is wake, waking up all thread that are waiting on the object monitor. Okay. And the highest priority thread will run first. First, of course. So in this example, uh, I'm going to actually run the uh, sample. Yeah. So let's actually run this inter uh, thread uh, exercise uh, together. Okay. So you know you're going to actually run the uh, producer consumer unsynchronized first, and then we are going to run producer consumer synchronized. So what we want to write is that you know this is actually famous producer and consumer example. So producer is going to produce something, and and then consumer will consume it. But consumer cannot produce, and consumer cannot consume until producer, you know, produces one, right? Okay, so consumer uh, cannot uh, consume until producer uh, produces one. So what you want to do is the consumer wants to wait until produces one, and consumer wants to produce uh, only after consumer consumes the previous one. Meaning, cons producer wants to produce only when there is a space to produce. So this is an example. Okay, so in this code, yes, yeah, so let's actually run producer unsynchronized and producer unsynchronized. Unsyn so let's run the uh, producer producer unsynchronized so let's run this guy so what you are seeing here is that uh, because the producer and consumer are not really synchronized uh, the consumer uh, the producer produce one but consumer just kind of asking you know whether consumer uh, consumer just keep asking so it's actually waste of uh, the uh, the resources, and uh, after consumer actually consumes, I mean you know it just kind of exhausted this try, and then producers then started to produce. So this is not really right. What we want to do is we want the consumer and producer to sort of synchronize. So this is the example. So as you can see, producer produces, and then uh, the consumer consumes it. Producer produces next one, then consume, consumer consumes it. So what you want to do is, if you want this producer thread and consumer thread to sort of communicate each other, so that they know when is the time to produce and when is the time to consume. Okay, so that is this logic. So uh, basically, we have this cubby hole, and this is the cubby hole that we want to, uh, you know, the uh, producer will produce in this hole. So in this hole, you can have only one item. Okay, so producer wants to make sure there is a space, and uh, you know the before you produce, and consumer wants to make sure uh, it you know the the uh, the uh, something is there, item is there before it wants to consume. So this is a case that uh, we uh, so let's actually take a look at the uh, nothing is synchronized. Okay, so this is unsynchronized case. So in this case uh, we have a cubby hole. Uh, let's actually take a look at this code first. So we have produces the uh, producer and we have a consumer, okay? And each one has this cubby hole. This is a location where you want to, uh, you know, the uh, the uh, produce and consume. And then we are studying uh, these two threads. So producer thread and consumer thread now get studied, okay? Uh, now uh, the cubby hole is basically uh, the uh, you know it's a place uh, where it has a flag whether it's available or not, and then this content okay so this is the sort of the back you know something is going to be uh, inserted into and then this is a producer thread so it extends a thread okay and then it has to implement the run method right and it doesn't check you know whether the uh, the uh, somebody is, somebody is not available whether something is ready or not it just keep putting it okay same thing for consumer consumer just get it it just keep getting it. It just tried like a ten times without any consideration of whether there is something to consume or not. Okay, meaning producer and consumer do not communicate at all here. Okay, so now we want to see. So that's the reason we're actually getting this undesirable result. Okay, now let's take a look at the synchronized case. So we studied producer thread and we studied consumer thread. Now we are going to have. Uh, you know, we are going to actually have this get method to be synchronized, and then we also have the uh, put method to be synchronized. Okay, so here, uh, this is the get. This is going to be used by the uh, consumer, right? So consumer 
will try to wait. So it, we, first of all, it checks whether that is actually something uh, available or not. If it's not, it wants to wait. Okay, so it basically released the lock. Okay, now this is a put. Put is again, if it is something is already available, it wants to wait. Okay, so the uh, in the case of put, uh, it's waiting, and now if the consumer takes it out, right, the consumer is going to actually notify all. So it wakes up everyone. So at that point, when w this thread is going to be awakened, so you know, it, when this notify is being invoked by the uh, consumer, then producer will actually wake here, and then will continue. So it will play. It it will place the things into contents and set the flag to true. Then once it actually adds something into the the uh, into the uh, into the back, then it's going to notify all. So this is going to actually let the consumer to wake up. Because consumer, when the available is false, is going to wait, right? So when this producer notify all after it place uh, the item into this bag, then this consumer will wake up from this wait. Uh, the and then it will take it, and then it's going to wake up. Uh, producer. Okay, so that is the logic. Okay, okay, so I'll give you guys five minutes to try this.